listen to that. That's one of Canada's biggest music stars paying it forward. She's performing with singers from the Sarah McLaughlin School of Music, an outreach program that gives instruction and mentorship to kids. It's just one way that Sarah McLaughlin has opened doors for younger artists, especially female artists. Tonight, in our Sunday interview, McLaughlin speaks with Andrew about that and more as she prepares to take the spotlight on a national stage. There's no doubt Sarah McLaughlin is one of Canada's most celebrated singer-songwriters. She sold over 40 million albums, but her biggest impact may have come from challenging the very same music industry that made her a star. In 1997, she founded Lilith Fair, an all-female music festival that was considered a radical idea at the time. The tour helped change attitudes then and remains relevant in today's Me Too era. But first, McLaughlin is about to embark on a new challenge. A week tonight, she'll take the stage as host of the Juno Awards. I met up with her in Toronto. Sarah, very nice to have you here. Thank you. So good to be here. And congratulations. Thank you. It's very exciting. It is. Can, can, I, can I tell you the, the thing that surprises me most about you hosting the Junos? That you haven't done it before. That, that, that this is your this first time. This is the time. first time they've asked me. How is that possible? I... <laughs> Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aren't you angry? <laughs> no, actually, I, I honestly think if they had asked me earlier, I would have been too afraid to do it. I, for most of my life, have been absolutely terrified of public speaking. I know that sounds ridiculous because I get up in front of thousands of people and sing. It's a very different thing to stand up in front of a room of strangers and have to you know, uh, give a certain number of, inf you know, the right kind of information, deliver it the right way. Um, see, even now I'm being an, el an eloquent when I'm trying to explain it. It's baffling to me. Are you stressed out? Um, about this? Yeah. No. My initial thoughts were thrilled and terrified. Um, and they kind of went back and forth. And I was like, oh, this scares me. I need to do it. I need to challenge myself. So I, and at this point in my life, I'm like, this is going to be fun. On the subject of, of artists and, and growth, uh, as you put it, I think of the, the spectrum of Canadian musicians today, and, and, and particularly young Canadian women. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you have Alessia Cara, you have Jesse Reyes, uh, you know, Ruth B. That, I mean, what do you think of where Canadian music is now in 2019? Um, I'm excited about it. I'm excited to see young up-and-coming artists gain international recognition, not only gain success in Canada, but on the world stage. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think we have a, a wealth of amazing talent here. And the Junos is a, a great opportunity for me as an artist who often lives a bit under a rock to come out and see what's happening. And can I put you on the spot? Are there standouts sure. that, uh, in your mind that, that you think, oh, this person is, is someone I'm really excited I, about? Well, I am in love with Alicia Carr. Like, I just think she's, her, what she stands for, she's a really good writer. Uh, she's just fantastic. Sean Mendez, I think he's lovely. But again, this is the artists that have, you know, have gained a lot of success. I'm looking forward to meeting new artists who I am not yet familiar with and seeing where they're going. If there is success out there, it, it is in large part because of the stage that, that you built. And, and I want to ask you about, you know, what, what I think of as a, as a culturally defining moment in the 90s. And, and I bring it up because uh, it's something that I think still very much has re relevance now. So, mm -hmm. Lilith Fair, do you reflect on what that festival that you help co-create. I mean, do you reflect back on what that proved to the world? I think I have moments of reflection when it's brought to my attention. Um, moments where a young woman, 37, 38 years old, a couple years ago, came up to me and said, I came to the very first Little Fair concert with my mother, and because of you and all those other women up there, you showed me that I could do anything. I'm now the CEO of a corporation. Hmm. Those moments those are so beautiful. So 
Yes, I do have opportunity to reflect on it. It shows that the women have power in the music industry. It gives you a lot of, you know, inspiration. I had so few female role models growing up, and I think it's really nice to see so many young women out there just loving what we're doing and going, wow, I can do that too. Those were amazing times. I'm so incredibly proud to have been part of that and to think that that may have paved the way for other artists to move forward and, and to be able to live their dreams. It's a beautiful thing. And, and for those people who may not be familiar or don't remember, I mean, remind us how difficult it was to be a, a <clears throat> woman in music. Well, it's difficult to be in music. That being said, I think it's difficult to be in any career. But back when I was uh, just coming up, there was a real old school male attitude that you couldn't put two women back to back on the radio. You certainly couldn't have two women on the same bill if you were touring. And it was sort of, it wasn't even an unspoken rule. It was just kind of there. I'd go into radio stations and they'd say, oh, well, we had Tori Amos this week, so we can't add you. Or we added Tracy Chapman this week, so we can't add you. And I'm like, we all make completely different music. I don't hear you complaining about Soundgarden and Pearl Jam right. and not putting them in the same radio station. So it seemed like a real double standard. So in, in wanting to put on something like Lilith, I had already had women opening up for me. Living in church. And certainly with the promoters we had a previous relationship with, they're like, this could work. But all the guys who didn't have a relationship with us in, in a business way, looked at that and went, you can't do that. Absolutely not, this will fail. And the words of my mother ringing in my ear, you can't do this, you will fail. That's how I was brought up. And That's what, what your that mother did, said pretty you. much, why would you even try? Why would you bother? You will not succeed. So I grew up fighting against that. I had something in me that wanted to prove her wrong or prove myself right. Um, and when someone says that to me, you can't do this, I'm like, oh. Oh, really? I can't? Well, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm so stubborn. Thank God I'm so stubborn. I'm like, I'm going to prove you wrong. We're going to do this, and we're just gonna, it's going to be fantastic. So like okay, so here's where I want to link past with present, mm -hmm. because if you fast forward to 2019, the age of Me Too, mm -hmm. also an age of defiance mm -hmm. in a way, are you heartened Absolutely. at the fact that, that it's happening? Or is it a little bit depressing to think, <clears throat> my gosh, still fighting, mm -hmm. different decade? You know, it, it takes centuries to change, to truly change a societal mindset. And we, as women, over the past 50 years, have gone from barefoot in the kitchen making babies to running corporations. And it's been a massive seismic shift for us and men have just had to sort of get a line and keep up. Yet, you know, the primitive brain, what we've grown up with and what our history and the deepest sense of our bones tells us is that men are in charge. They've always been. So we get to fight against that now. We have the power to fight against it. And thank God for me too. And thank God for women finally being able to stand up for themselves and start to feel that power that they intrinsically have. And I'm happy about it because we cannot be complacent we can't rest in our laurels and think, oh yeah, it's, it's equal now. You talk to, before Me Too, you talk to some young girls coming up in high school and they're like, oh yeah, we don't have to worry about that. Everything's cool, everything's equal. It's so not. We've got such a long way to go. And this may sound shocking, but you know, Trump paved the way for all of this. His horrible behavior and the fact that it was accepted by so many people pissed women off to the point where we finally had enough and we had to do something about it. In a way, you know, all his terrible behavior has brought all these atrocities to light as well that needed to come to light in order for us to start to heal and move forward. That takes time. It takes a lot of time for that kind of change to happen. I want to end on, on one more question for you. What motivates you now and, and and I think musically right I mean mm. w it, whatever it is is it the same thing that that motivated you you know 30 30 years ago I'm gonna say yes um, it's the desire to grow and and change and embrace those changes and and find a way through you know I, I'm excited for 2019 I'm excited to, to challenge myself to host the Junos I'm working on a new record so I just look forward to I look forward to everything. It's <laughs> beautiful to be alive and healthy right now.
Well, it was wonderful to talk to you. Sarah, Thank thanks you. so much. My pleasure. Thank you.